Next up, Glennon, uh, my colleague at AEC, and he will tell us how we have done it, actually. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. It seems to be on. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, first thing I should say is now nobody will believe a word I say. Uh, thank you, Yanni. For, nobody trusts marketers anymore. <laughs> um, so um, let's see if I can I can share a few things with you. Um, okay. So I'll start off with uh, a quote. Willy Brandt, who was the former cha uh, Chancellor of West Germany, once said something that uh, um, if I'm selling to you, I speak your language. If I'm buying from you, then it was something, something, something. The something, something, something he said was in German. And the idea was that, as you all know, if you want to sell something to someone, you speak their language. I don't speak German. Uh, that's why I can't tell you the quote. Uh, but the idea is that um, that's, for me, not important. I don't market to Germany. I do produce content in four languages, English, Finnish, Swedish, and Danish. And it's very important for me to uh, know my audience. So uh, why do I do the content? Well, the, the, uh, the answer to that is very uh, simple. So, uh, as many of you are probably aware, when it comes to pr content production, uh, you're responsible for a lot of things. Uh, we have a very small team ourselves of marketing people, and <coughs> we have to take care of uh, all the content production. So, a lot of time and effort goes into it, and I want to reuse it. I want to reach out to a broader market. I know that if the content is in their language, they will find it more relatable. People like to buy in their own language. As Yanni talked about return on investment, I also want to lower my customer acquisition costs. This is just very basic. I want to get as much as I can for my content. Okay, so we take a look at a very simple example. This is a social media post we ran recently for, for blog content. Uh, you can see that in the middle, uh, I can see the results for the English language version that we ran. When I run it in Swedish, I get 70% higher click-through rate, 35% higher engagement. Uh, with Finnish, it's 116 and 70%. So. Uh, you can tell as well where our audience is. Simply by running the content uh, in multilingual versions, I can uh, double the uh, reach that I get. We see it very clearly with the content that we produce that if we go to the trouble uh, of localizing it, uh, we get much better results. We could just produce more content in English. We could focus our resources on, as Jenny said, doubling down on content. We do find, though, that if we take the F time and effort, even though the Nordics speak very good level of English, we find that people do like to read content in their own language. So this part about knowing your process and why this is important. Um, if you want to have multilingual content, you need to know your process uh, inside out so you can find a way to seamlessly fit it into the translation process. So we take a look at how do we do the marketing in more than one language. Okay, so marketers are not translators. Okay, that's very difficult to find a translator who understands the marketing as well. Uh, Unfortunately, translators are not marketers either. So this is the problem. How do we connect both of these? Um, it's quite difficult in a lot of ways. Um, dialogue. Dialogue is really the only solution to this. There has to be uh, dialogue and there has to be some level of understanding. Okay, so, very large translation company. Uh, when I started producing the blog content, um, I talked to our internal people and they said, 
the customers never send us any instructions. Never send. They just send us the, they just say, translate this. And we translate it and send it back. So I thought, OK, I know what I'll do. I will write very clear instructions. So the first time I sent out a blog for translation, I'd written the content in English. I thought, OK, I'll design a very nice template. I had the title of the blog. Then I had the blog body. And then I had written marketing blog text. I thought, OK, everything's clear. So a couple of years later, this is the template that I now send out when I want a blog translated. So there are a few more items on this these days. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Content description, the tags, the internal tags that we're using. Um, the keywords. The keywords are so important, as you know yourselves, when it comes to these. Fine, we have the terminology management, so we manage the keywords that we've already created. But if I'm trying to establish a new keyword or we're moving into a, a service that we haven't provided, for example, in Denmark before, I now need to start establishing some uh, ranking keywords. Um, I also want some uh, variety in my text, so I have to ask the translator for some alternatives. Um, there are a couple of other things that you see that are underlined. I have written with spaces. So, for example, the meta text, 300, minimum of 300 characters, actually you say max, maximum of 300 characters with spaces. So I received back my Danish translation. I've forgotten to stipulate that there has to be maximum of 300 characters with spaces. It's 300 characters without spaces. It's 317 characters with spaces. I don't speak Danish. I don't speak Swedish. I've been living in Finland for many years. I really don't speak Finnish very well. And there are days like today when I feel like I don't speak English very well either. <laughs> I look at the Danish and I think, OK, I, do I just remove some random letters? Or do I, delay my, do I delay my posting by a couple of days so I can go back to the translator and get these things fixed? It's, uh, it's quite difficult. I've also underlined hyphen location for the image text. You may have seen me outside taking photographs. So small team, we have to be, uh, we have to be multitaskers. So produce the content, get the content published, run the numbers, do the data, take the photographs, do the images. So this was one I came up with uh, recently. Uh, nice blog, by the way. Uh, how much content do you need to do marketing in another language? So I send it out for translation, and I get the finish back. And I'm very pleased with that. I like the image. I think it's very, it's a nice composition. I get my Swedish back, and I think, Ah, OK, yes. Um, I go around the office and go, does anyone know where I put the hyphen in this word? Um, it's quite difficult. So a little bit of Photoshopping later, and I get it to fit in, and I don't like it anymore. What I should really have done is I should alter my process so that I have all my translations, and then I design my image, my banner image around those. But of course, my schedule doesn't always allow that. Uh, I'd show you the Danish example that I got back, but they wouldn't let me take it on the plane. It was too big. So, <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, know your audience, know your process, know your content. Um, I'll go through a couple of things quickly before I finish up. The keywords, uh, two options. Train a translator to pick the right translation and the right keywords based on volume and analytics. Option B, uh, ask for a minimum of three translations for a keyword and you run the numbers. <sighs> Neither one is, is perfect and there are, it depends on your own abilities. For example, with B, yeah, I can run the numbers, but I can't tell if the translation for culture uh, in a language relates to business communication culture or it relates to, I don't know, knitting as a hobby, for example. So dialogue, establishing a relationship with the translator is the best option. Character limits. Character limits are everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Uh, banners, image, all text. I could spend the next the next six months going through all of our 
language versions and all of the alt text and fixing all of them. That it would take it would uh, take a long time. Form fields when you have responsive websites, of course, where things have the uh, hyphen breaks is very important. And of course, advertising the character character limits and the space that you have. Um, Yanni was talking about video. Video subtitling has been something that has also been very challenging for us recently. How you how you break down where you're going to have your content. Then finally, the context. So people talk about your content is king. Take it out of context, hand it to a translator. It's not really the king anymore. I have found through experience that I need to batch as much as possible together for the translator. So what typically happens is the whole content production process in English I have everything designed, and I give it to the translator. If I've forgotten something, which happens quite a lot, or I've forgotten to stipulate exactly what I want, when I get it back, I have very little time left at the end to make some adjustments. Very difficult. I try to give as much background information as possible, and I never send one-line translation requests. I say never, don't trust marketers. Um, <coughs> I do, of course I do. And the number one rule that I have is when I send it out for translation, that's it. The master content is locked down, no more changes. Because while I'm waiting for it to be translated, I start fiddling with the master content and I think, oh, this would be better here, this would be better there, I'll change this sentence. And I get it back, and now I'm trying to, which Danish word can I move from here to here in my content? It doesn't work for me. So I have to make sure that I lock everything down. The translators, without any other instructions, will aim for uh, grammatical accuracy, linguistic quality. They want the best translation that they can give you. They want to give you the best translation possible. And as marketers, sometimes you don't want the best language translation. So then we start to have to look at other options as well. But I do find if you batch as much as possible, give them some context, then you get a lot more continuity. Okay, um, so I'm the guy with the camera. If anyone wants to talk about content production and multilingual content production, afterwards we'll be here and there'll be a question and answers session at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Very practical um, insights, I have to say. Very good. Thank you.